Hello and welcome to this live demo session. Uh, if you want to follow along, uh, I encourage you to go and download Ubuntu 14.04 and Windows Server 2012 R2. Uh, you can find these at the home page of the different sites. Uh, let's see if I can help you get there. So the easiest way to get Windows uh, Server 2012 is to just search for this and evaluation at the end and then you have to have a Microsoft account uh, but then you can just sign in and get an evaluation uh, version of uh, both uh, standard edition and data center edition for uh, half a year 180 days uh, I hope you hear me uh, I'm controlling all the techniques myself today so if anyone in the chat can just type that the sound is okay, that would be great. Um, okay, good, thank you. Uh, zero four. Uh, here you can download uh, Ubuntu. So start downloading those ISO files uh, so you can follow along. Uh, this live demo, we will go through a little bit about VirtualBox, the interface, how to create a virtual machine, uh, configure the hardware and mounting ISOs. Then we will start installing both a Windows machine and a Windows Server 2012 and an Ubuntu uh, server as well. Then we will perform some post setup. We will install, well, in, during, uh, as we said uh, during the last lecture, the post setup, uh, you should install drivers, but this is a virtual machine, so you don't have uh, the physical hardware. But you still have uh, a uh, guest edition, they call it, that should be installed. So we go through that. Then we will show how to configure the network settings uh, and configure updates and a bit about the firewalls, so we can get some communication up and running between those two machines. So VirtualBox, we won't be using VirtualBox uh, much in this course because we will use our own cloud when it's ready. Um, but for this first uh, part, we can um, use VirtualBox. I have some machines uh, before uh, when you start up, you probably have some machines also uh, in that you have created in the previous course. Uh, but to create the machine is quite easy. You just hit new. Uh, the interface may differ be, uh, be, uh, between operating systems. I'm running on uh, OS 10 as you see here. Uh, but for the most part, I think it's, it looks the same. So we can start with the Ubuntu machine. Uh, we need to give it a name. And as I type the name, it uh, realizes which type of OS it is uh, and what version or distribution. If it doesn't, if you name it something else, uh, then you should pick the correct uh, operating system and distribution if it's Linux. Um, the next step is how much memory we should use uh, give this machine. Um, it has pre-configured uh, this for you depending on what uh, operating system you choose in the previous menu. Uh, so usually this is good. If you have not that much RAM, you can run this on 250 megabytes or so. Uh, then it asks you where it wants to store. You want to store uh, your hard disk. How store, uh, big it should be. Uh, the default settings will work for us not right now. Then we have different types of hard disk, and this is only if you wanted to move this machine to another virtualization technique. Uh, but for us, the virtual box disk image will be fine. Uh, this is how it should allocate the space on the hard disk. Um, 
for, for testing, you should always choose dynamic, then it won't use more than it actually uses. If you choose a fixed size, it will allocate all that uh, resource. Uh, and then where it should store the machine. Uh, I have a default location uh, where it will store it. It's under my computer name. Uh, and like that, we have a virtual machine. We haven't installed anything yet, but uh, we see all the virtual hardware uh, connected to the machine. It has added audio and network and USB drives for us. Uh, we can disable those if we want to, but for now this will be good. So as you see here in the, on my desktop, uh, uh, I have two ISOs. One is for Ubuntu and one is for Windows. Uh, so when I start this machine, it doesn't have anything on the hard disk. It ha doesn't have anything to boot on. So it will ask me what boot device I wanted to use or what CD or something to boot on. Uh, and it will look if I have used some before. Uh, it will try and find those. Uh, otherwise, you hit this button and you will go to where you have stored the ISOs. Here we go. And then it will boot on that uh, drive. Uh, you don't see this, sorry. <laughs> it was on my other machine. Uh, I think I will close this down so you can see it from the beginning. Um, sorry. It opened up on my, my second screen. Now, probably I won't get the question, but uh, you will get the question, where do you want to boot from? And then you choose your ISO file. Uh, the first one is the language for the installation. And then we want to install Ubuntu server. You get these pop-ups from VirtualBox uh, explaining how some things work. You can read them or just ignore them. The next is the language for the installation process. Uh, this one is uh, where you are located and it's how it determines the time zone and stuff like that. So we should choose the correct uh, here. And I live in Sweden, so I should set Europe and way down we have Sweden. And this is the location settings. Here we have United States, I want. Now it wants to detect my keyboard and my keyboard looks like a Swedish keyboard. I have these special characters and it can detect them or you can choose it. If I try to detect, it will ask me some character that are specific for a keyboard and try to identify it. So just hit the keys and then it will ask, okay, do you have this character? Uh, Yes, we do in Sweden. So I have that, and I also have the O. I don't have that character, so that's no. And then it had figure out that my keyboard layout should be SE, which is correct. Um, I could say this while this is going. Uh, the virtual box has added a network interface for my machine. We'll have a look at those. You see I have attached a network address translation network. I have a different type of networks. And what this does is that it's set up a, a, a way for the, virt for the virtual machine to use my network and come through out to the internet. Uh, we haven't discussed not that much, uh, and I won't go through it here, but it's a way for the co for virtual machines to get out through the my network and use that network. And we will need that in the big end during the setup because Ubuntu is relied on an internet connection to download stuff during the installation. Uh, but you don't have to do anything. It, this will be set up as default. Uh, it will ask me for a name for the host. We can 
choose Ubuntu for now and then we will change that in the post setup. We want a username and an account name for that user and a password. Uh, it asked me if I want to encrypt my home directory. Uh, for this demo, I won't do that. And now, because I have chosen where I lived, it will tell me where my time zone is, and this is correct. So I won't change that. Uh, then it asks us how we want to partition the hard disk. It can use different types. Uh, LMV uh, we will use here. I won't go through exactly what that is now. We won't uh, enable encryption because we don't need it for this uh, demo. Uh, so you can just choose the, the default setting here. Then it shows which hard drive we want to use. Uh, and we have to confirm that this is the settings that we want to use. All the data that was once on the disk will be erased, but we have, uh, haven't got any data on the disk for now. And this is how it will partition up the hard disk. Uh, we've talked about swap before, uh, where it should keep a uh, place. Uh, when you have filled up all the RAM, it will use the swap to, to use the disk uh, uh, to manage the memory. And you can see everything here. And we just confirm that. Here we have, uh, if we want the system to automatically download security updates, uh, or if we want to do that ourselves. Uh, for this demo, I will use manual updates, not automatic. Then it asks us what we want to use the server for, uh, and then it will install uh, some packages uh, by default. But uh, we want to do this all by ourselves, so we will uh, just continue. No, that will take some time. In the meantime, we are going to start creating the Windows machine. So we give it a name. And you see here also that it uh, find what type of version uh, I will use during this setup. The, map, the RAM, we use the default, also for the hard disk, the same as for Ubuntu. And the name. So when we start this, we can see the same question, which CD or DVD we, we want to boot from, uh, and we will choose the correct one here, and this is the one. They have a quite strange naming convention uh, over at Microsoft. It's quite hard to realize that this is the evaluation version of Windows 2012 R2, but it is. And you will see that Microsoft has quite fast uh, installation process. They have speed this up quite a bit uh, uh, for this version uh, than they had before. Uh, it's just a few steps that we have to go through, and then it will just copy this image uh, over uh, to the hard disk, and it will work. So we want to install it in English, but our time and currency format is Swedish, for me anyway. And then we want to install.
they want us to use a quite big screen for this. Sorry. And then we have four options for installation. We have standard version and the data center version. We talked about uh, uh, during our group discussion. Uh, and then we have server core with a GUI. We will use the core version and the standard evaluation. We agree to the terms. And since we don't have an operating system before, we can't use the upgrade option here. We have to use the custom. And it will find a hard disk uh, that hasn't been allocated yet, not been used. You can partition it if you want to. Uh, otherwise, just continue. And that's about it. Uh, you won't get any more question, just a reboot question, actually. Uh, and then the system will be up and running. So it's quite fast. Uh, if you go back to the Ubuntu server, it will ask us about the bootloader. A bootloader is what is uh, run uh, when the BIOS is done. Uh, and it has to do with, if you have multiple operating system, this will help you choose in the beginning. Uh, so it need to put this uh, bootloader in the master boot record. And we have to do that to make it work. If you don't have a bootloader before, I should say. So now the Ubuntu server seems to be finished. He wants us to eject the hard disk. Uh, oh, not the hard disk, <laughs> the CD. Uh, but as you see, this is grayed out. It will already have been done for us, actually. So we just continue. You can see in the background, Windows is also working on the installation. And there we go. We have an Ubuntu server uh, running without any GUI or graphical interface or something like that. Uh, so to log in, we just type the account name that we created and the password. And now we're logged in. Good. Let's see how it's going for the Windows machine. The server core installation is quite fast. It only takes around three, four minutes on a virtual machine to install it. Now it's done. The CD is still mounted, so it's nice if you want to boot on that. The first question we will get in Windows when it's done is a password for the administration account. That will be up in just a minute. So, and here we go. The Windows machine is also done. Good. And because we installed uh, Server Core, we don't have a graphical interface. So we have to do it uh, everything in the terminal or in the console. Let's see what's next on my list on what we should do today. We have gone through the virtual box interface and we have installed Windows Server and Ubuntu Server. Uh, now we will install the drivers or the additions in the uh, virtual box. And it's a CD that you uh, have to mount in the machine. So you just go to devices and insert guest editions CD image. It will then change the CD and in Windows you can just, usually it's the D drive, so you go to that uh, and check the content and here you, show you have some files uh, which we will be used. We'll just run the correct one. 
Uh, VBox, uh, we should use the 64 version, I believe. Yes. And we will just go through the installation process here on Windows. It will install drivers. I have to accept these. And we need a reboot. That's about it for Windows. It's not quite so easy on the Ubuntu machine. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, so we are logged in. Uh, the first thing we need to do is install some packages. We need to install kernel headers and build tools uh, to be able to install the additions CD uh, because it rely on those. Uh, so we have to be connected to the internet uh, to be able to use this package manager apt-get. Uh, so we need to be an administrator to be able to install all these. Uh, so apt get is a command uh, that you use to install and update software on uh, Ubuntu. Uh, it's available in different uh, uh, distributions, uh, but this is the command that we use on uh, Ubuntu. So apt get install, and what do we want to install? Build essential and module assistant. Uh, I don't remember these in my head, which have to be installed before. Uh, I just Google the, um, I'll go to the VirtualBox homepage and look it up. And I need a password to be able to be sudo. It will go to the internet and look for these packages, and then it will list what will be needed for the installation. seem to work fine. Then we need to run sudo So now this have been installed. Uh, now we need to mount the, the CD. Uh, and if you go to device, install guest edition CD image, it will be added, uh, but not mounted. You have to do that yourself. And you have to know the name of where the device is connected to the machine. Uh, and you can get that by this command. Here you will see all the devices connected. And we have no, you don't see the uh, mouse, of course. Uh, the first option here, uh, dev sr0, is the name of the uh, CD and the file system on it, ISO 9660. That's the file uh, system for CDs. Uh, and we need to create a mounting point for this. So we can just, where I am here right now, this is my home directory. I could create a CD directory here and mount it in. And then we use the, the mount command. And we have to be sudo to uh, run that. What is the device that we want to mount? Well, that is the name that we saw before when running the previous command. It's uh, this line here. Dev. SR0, 
and where we want to mount it uh, in our CD Roam directory. It says that it's right protected, and yes, it is. It's an ISO. You can't write on that. And we can go to the CD directory and list the content, and we'll see we have about the same as we did in the Windows version. Uh, and now we have to compile this. And uh, VirtualBox has helped us and created a script file for that. Uh, so we just have to run that script with sudo. like that and hopefully everything will work. It now will build the, the, the kernel modules and the drivers to make this work. So as you see, it's, it's a bit different in the Linux uh, version uh, than in Windows. But you only have to do this when you install a new operating system. So in the meantime, we can go, let's see what I have planned for next. No, it didn't find a uh, graphical interface, so it will skip uh, installing uh, that. After installation, you need to reboot to get every module loaded. I got a question if it's uh, if there is a simple command to install LAMP on Ubuntu. The problem is, I don't know that, and we will use LAMP uh, in this course. Um, but if you Google it, it will probably not be that easy, uh, hard to, to accomplish it. So now everything should be installed, the drivers anyway. Uh, now we are connected to the internet uh, because we have this nated network uh, and we have gotten an IP address from a DSP server which is run by VirtualBox. Uh, if we want to check our um, settings for the for interface, we just an Ubuntu call if config and we will see the network configuration. Uh, so we got an, an, an local address as we see 10.0.2.15. Uh, and in Windows, mm -mm. as you see here in, in Windows, and I resize the window. It will change the, the resolution for the screen. And the, to be able to do that, it, uh, you have to install these uh, uh, CD the additions. I would, didn't want to do that, but it should do. Uh, and you get a good feature is you, that you uh, will be able to cut and paste information from the host system into this one. Uh, and that's quite good. I haven't gotten that to work in Ubuntu, uh, but I will look into it and uh, we can, uh, I can check if we can do that the next uh, demo time. It should work. We have installed all the, um, the drivers to be able to do it, but I haven't got it to work. Um, usually when you want to administer the Ubuntu server, after it's been installed, you use SSH or something like that, and then you will be able to cut and paste because you use your own ter terminal to connect the machine. Uh, oh, we talked about the IP configuration. And in Windows, you type IP config to be able to get the network. And here we say that we have uh, 10.0.2.15. As you see, we have the same IP address, which is quite strange. 
they should not be able to communicate because they if if they were on the same network but they're not actually uh, the virtual box is creating separate network for these virtual machines as of now uh, and we need to be able to uh, go through the internet to do some things so we will keep these at these networks for now um, and if we want to get updates in Windows we have a helpful command uh, called sconfig uh, which has uh, it's a menu where you can choose different uh, administration tasks. You can change the computer name. If I hit a 2, then we will be able to create a new name. And then it, you have to reboot your computer to do that. If you want to rename your computer, uh, your Linux, or a Ubuntu machine. Uh, you have two files that you have to edit. Uh, if we look into the file uh, etc uh, host name, you will see that the name. You can edit this uh, with, uh, but you have to be sudo sudo nano if you want or any text editor that you like uh, etc host name and then we save the file you should also edit the file etc host no host sorry um, because this is a static mapping uh, for name and IP address and you need to uh, change this to the correct one also it doesn't update that uh, automatically you shouldn't change the local host it should always be connected to uh, 127.0.0.1 and then you could restart some services to make this work uh, but the easiest way since we don't or no one is dependent on this system now we can just reboot it So the Windows machine is up again and we have changed the computer name. Here we see that we have a new uh, computer name. Uh, we log in again and we see uh, by the prompt that we have a new computer name, Jacob at Ubuntu Desk demo as we changed it to. So it seemed to work. Good. Uh, the next is updates. In Linux you use the apt-get. Uh, update. You have to type the correct password. And then, then it will check if uh, which packages packages that need to be updated. It won't update them. Uh, it's just getting the, the current the correct information from uh, the Ubuntu service. Uh, to update the system, you after you have run the update command, you run upgrade, and then it will tell you what uh, will be installed and updated. In Windows, as I told you uh, during the lecture, there are not some pre-installed uh, 
PowerShell commandlets for managing updates. Uh, there are some on the internet. I haven't tested them out. So for now, we can use sconfig. And here we have an option about the download and install updates. For six, we can just take the recommended because there will be quite a lot of updates. It will go out on the internet to the uh, update servers at uh, Microsoft, and it will take some time to, to collect these. Hopefully, the Ubuntu server will be done before that. Oh, yes, it is. Good. Um, the last part of this demo is about network and uh, a bit of uh, with the security with the firewall. So we can continue. I can just put it down here so I see when it's ready. Uh, and now, if we want these computers to uh, communicate, we have to change the network settings. Uh, and we do that in the setting, network settings. It's now connected to the NAT. We have to change that to some internal network. Uh, we can call it internet. Uh, and now we shouldn't be able to go out on the internet anymore. We will still have the, the IP address that we did before. Uh, because it's assigned by DNS, it won't go out until the, 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 the lease period is out to collect a new one. Uh, but since we are not connected to the, the, the same network, we won't be able to, to connect to the router and, and uh, get out to the internet. We can try this by ping google.se or something like that. It won't be able to do that. Uh, so we can abort that, but control C. Uh, so to configure uh, the network settings in Ubuntu, you have to edit some files again. So sudo nano uh, etc and network uh, interfaces. Here we have some setup already. That's why we got an IP address from the DHB server. Uh, and the network is uh, ETH0. And it's uh, for now using DHCP, but it won't be able to get an IP address. We can comment this out. And if we want to use a static address, uh, it's, uh, we have that, and we specify that we want the interface ETH0 to be statically assigned. And then we have the address. I will just pick a, a local address for now. <coughs> and we have the net mask. We use a 24 net mask. We don't have a get gateway uh, in this network, so I if you want, if you had a network a gateway, you can just type gateway in the name for the gateway. And if you wanted to assign a DNS uh, servers, you just type uh, uh, DNS DNS um, name servers, and then the address for the name servers. If you want to have two, then you just separate them by space. But we won't be able to connect those, so I won't specify that. Uh, and then we save this file. And to be able to activate these, we have 
run another command. Uh, you can reboot the system, of course, but it's tiresome to reboot all the time. If down, we'll bring down the interface. Uh, so now we don't have that interface. If we type if config, we just have the loopback uh, interface for now. And then we we'll just bring it back up. And now we will have that statically assigned IP address. Good. Uh, if you are connected to the machine, uh, not physical, uh, you have to, as I said, specify these commands on the same line. Uh, otherwise, you will be disconnected from that. Uh, and when you bring down the interface, then you won't be able to connect to it again. But you can specify these by adding two uh, and signs and just uh, sudo if up etch. Now then we we'll first bring down the interface and then bring it up again. Uh, so, good. Uh, now to be able to connect or uh, to ping these two, I won't install these updates now. They will take some time. And I will exit it out from this. You can use uh, the sconfig to change the IP address for the Windows machine also. But it's good to learn the net uh, sh commands uh, to uh, configure the IP settings. So we'll be using those. But first, we will change the network to the same internal network. Uh, you can use the IP config command to try to renew the DHCP address. If we do that now, it will release the, the address and try to connect to, a, try to find broadcast out to a, a to a DNS server. Please give me an address, but no one is there and, and will not answer you. So you have to statically assign this uh, now. And I abort this, and we use uh, the net sh command. And with this command config, we will show the current configuration. Uh, series still has the same uh, uh, statically assigned, uh, the, the dynamically assigned address. Uh, but what we want here is the name of the interface because we need that when we configure the network. So we need this this part. We can actually cut and paste this if we want to. Then we use. Uh, net sh interface ip and then instead of show we said set uh, address and then it want the name of the interface we want to statically sign it and we use The next one, I used the uh, 101 uh, for the Linux uh, server. And the uh, net mask. Oh, sorry, that's a big net mask. It has to be the same, of course. And if you had a an, an, uh, gateway, you will add that there too. So let's show the config again. Okay. It took some time. Now that is uh, configured. So if we try to ping the, the, the Linux machine, we'll get an answer. So good. Uh, 
let's try and do the same for the Linux machine. Let's see if we get the, the same answer. We ping the Windows machine. That was a two. But here we don't get any answers. And why is that? Any idea? No one on live coding seems to know why. No, not the bridge network. Windows comes when it's installed the firewall is on and it won't accept uh, ping. So we have to configure the firewall to uh, be able to um, reply on, on ping. Uh, and I show the, you this in the lecture. Mm -mm. quite long command uh, to modify the, the firewall. Oh. Cut and paste didn't seem to work. Let's see. Oh, that's right. You have to tell the virtual machine that you will allow um, a shared clipboard. So hopefully now, mm, oh, let me try it again. Copy the command. So here's the command. It's probably quite small for you to see, but you use NES, uh, net sh, and then you will, will go to the advanced firewall, and we will add a rule. Uh, allow we can give it a name. Allow ICMP version four direction intern. That's if it comes from the outside and comes in, we will allow, and the protocol is ICMP version four. Now that is applied, and when if we try, yeah, you see here, yeah, the computer started to answer. Good. Um, if we, on the other hand, go and check the firewall on the Linux machine, sudo uh, ufv status. we will see that it's not active. Uh, and that's not good. We want an, an firewall on a machine. And it's quite easy to, to uh, enable it. Just uh, type sudo ufv enable. And now the firewall is on. It will still answer to ping. Uh, it has some default rules that are applied uh, and uh, ping is one of those that are allowed. Uh, if you wanted to, to add uh, something, if you wanted to be able to SSH into the machine, uh, then you have to enable SSH, of course, but to, uh, to get it through the firewall, you just type uh, you sudo ufv uh, allow, was, and then the port number. So now we have added that, so it will be able to we can see that that's on. Uh, this status command can be somewhat misleading, as you see here. Uh, the only thing that seems to be allowed is SSH, or the port 22. But actually, there are some predefined options that you don't see here uh, that are also uh, active. But hopefully, the, the team, the development team at Ubuntu have made the correct choice here. So, for this demo, I think it was exactly what I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope uh, you have learned something uh, and it will be helpful. Any questions now? Okay, then we will end. Thank you for watching. <laughs>